Hey, what's up guys? I'm in uh, gorgeous Duluth, Minnesota in the fall. Not a better place for video and photo. And today we are going to be testing out the Sigma 30 millimeter 1.4 lens. So the Sigma 30 millimeter lens, it's 1.4 aperture, goes all the way up to 16 aperture. Uh, this thing has just varieties of uses. It's for the Sony APS-C crop body cameras, such as the A6000 series, the 5100, uh, the 6500, 6400, 6600, so on, so on. It is a 30 millimeter lens, which is equivalent to about a 45 millimeter lens on a full frame. So who is this for? I use this thing for photo and for video. This thing is sensational on portraits. It is super sharp. And uh, landscapes, it's great on that as well. But my favorite use personally is just using this for a video lens because uh, this thing just kind of gives a real natural look. It, it gives a real flattering look. They say a 50 millimeter equivalent is kind of how humans see the world. So this lens is gonna be kind of seeing it as a natural sense. Uh, the color on this thing is outstanding. The sharpness is just unreal. Um, I believe that this is one of the sharpest lenses for a Sony crop body camera. So let's talk f-stop. This thing goes up to a 1.4 aperture, which is just insane for this price. This thing comes in at $350 retail. You can get these sometimes used even cheaper. But a 1.4, this thing brings in so much light, it's almost like you could see better looking through your camera at nighttime than your actual eyes, because this thing is just lights up everything. So the aperture range on this goes from 1.4 to 16. So you have plenty of uses for this thing. You can do long exposure by jumping this thing up to 16. Um, I like to sit around that 2.8 for talking head stuff all the way up to like 6 to 7 for scenes like this where I want some of the background to not be so blurred out. And then I typically use this a lot for b-roll. Um, this thing just has like a real smooth look to it. It's the, the focal length that I kind of prefer. Sometimes I'll use the 16 or even uh, punch in on a zoom lens to like 70. But more often than not, I'm sitting using this lens for B-roll. So this lens does come with the, the bottom cap and the hood and a lens cap. Um, I don't typically use the hood a lot because I usually use variable ND filters so you can control your exposure better. Uh, it does have a nice ring to it. It's a rubber grip, just like all the rest of the Sigma cameras. It's a focus by wire, so people out there who don't like focus by wire, you're going to hate this lens. Uh, if you've not been using cameras a whole lot, focus by wire, probably you'll just get used to it and you won't notice the difference. Um, the original version of this was kind of touchy manual focus. They have since then had a firmware update that has improved that, so you don't have to worry about that anymore. So let's talk autofocus. Uh, this thing is pretty damn fast at autofocusing. Um, it doesn't like to hunt a whole lot. I have had some situations where in lower lighting, and if, especially if you have kind of like neon or LED lighting behind you, the thing can kind of do this a little bit where, you know, if you're kind of moving a little bit around, it'll kind of focus track a little bit, but nothing terrible. Uh, typically when I'm sitting down at the computer, I'm actually putting this in like a manual focus, unless I'm planning on putting something in front of the camera to show you guys. But the autofocus is pretty blazing fast on this thing. It's not quite as fast as some of the Sony native lenses as to be expected from a third-party lens. But I, I think this thing, Sigma in general, just has great autofocus for a third-party lens company. So would you use this more for landscape, for portrait? And really, it, it's such a focal length where it's not a wide angle, it's not a zoom lens. It's kind of in that middle spot where it's just natural. Honestly, like, you do whatever you want with this thing. If you want to put this into a portrait, do that if you're trying to film landscape. Depends on how much room you have behind you to showcase the, you know, the landscape. If it's something like this, um, this might be a great focal length just to kind of show a big wide angle. Uh, sometimes I'll jump down to the 16, but really when you're hundreds of feet away from something, sometimes that 30 and 16 really is not so noticeable. Um, unless you're really trying to squeeze something in a picture, then maybe like a 16 millimeter lens would be good. So the question is, can you vlog on this lens? Simple answer, unless you have like six foot arms, no. Don't bother logging, vlogging with this lens. This thing is too close. Uh, you'll end up looking like this trying to vlog and it's just kind of a dumb look. So typically not a vlog lens, but if you like to set 
stuff down on a tripod, walk away from it a little bit, then yeah, 30 millimeter, you can vlog with it, just not quite handheld capabilities. So how's the bokeh on this thing? Bokeh on this is incredible. When you can get this thing down to 1.4, which means you'll probably need a, a variable ND filter. If you're outside on a variable ND filter and you're trying to use a 1.4, I would recommend the 6 through 9, not the 2 through 5, just because you start to get too close to that 32 ND and it's starting to probably get some vignetting in the corners, which is to be expected on most variable NDs when you get two point. Um, but when you can get this thing down to 1.4, that background just gets gorgeous and blurry and I love this lens for that. So now let's talk one of the downsides to this lens. It is not a stabilized lens, which means you're going to want probably a gimbal, you're going to want to use tripods, uh, you're going to want to use like a camera strap, pull that thing tight, bury your arms in your chest, whatever you got to do to keep that camera steady. And I found on like the 30 millimeter lens, it's fairly decent, it's controllable. Uh, the 56 millimeter lens is probably at the point where it's going to be tough to keep steady. The 16 you can keep steady pretty good as long as you're not walking really hard. Uh, but walking around with this thing, if you're going to walk around with this lens, you're going to either want the A6500 or 6600 with stabilization. And even then, that's only going to get, get you so far. Um, I would recommend getting like a gimbal, whether it's like the Weevil S or V2 Crane, even like the smaller gimbals, if, depending on this thing, because this, this lens is a really small lens. It really does not take up much room on your camera. It is very light. Um, which also brings us to the thing. What is this made out of? This is a kind of a solid metal lens. It's got a little bit of heft to it, but it is a uh, pretty good construction. It doesn't feel cheap. It feels like a great lens. It's uh, made in Japan. But yeah, if you're gonna be walking around with this thing, I would recommend getting a gimbal for sure. So is this a B-roll beast? Absolutely, it's a B-roll beast. You get this thing on a gimbal, and you walk around stuff, you do cool little orbits. This thing is just the perfect focal length for that. Uh, even when I'm using my other lens, like my 18 to 105, I'm still sitting in that 30 mil range, just because I love that range. It's good. Um, you can get pretty close with this lens to stuff, but when you get too close, it's obviously going to be too zoomed in. So how does it compare to the Sigma 16? Uh, it's similar in the same the fact that it's like it has the same look, it has the same settings, it has the same bokeh. Uh, it's just zoomed in more, and it gives a slightly different look. Lens distortion on this is definitely happening quite a bit, but if you're doing photos, there's a preset Lightroom, just click that preset. It'll be, it'll just straighten it out for you. I have no problem. So how sharp is this lens? This lens is so dang sharp. It's probably one of the sharpest lenses on a Sony crop sensor camera. Uh, and then you throw in the fact that it's a $350 lens. That's insane. Uh, this is one of my favorite lenses for doing photography. If I have, enough room to get away from the subject, hands down, I'm using this lens. If I'm too far away from the subject, then yeah, I'm gonna probably have to use a zoom lens. And if I'm way too close, don't have room, we're, we're jumping to the 16 mil lens. All right, we're losing light, so I gotta get down there on Pebble Beach so we can go get a cool shot of the uh, lighthouse. Crap, you guys gotta see this. There is an amazing view when you get around this corner. guys that is the Sigma 30 lens uh, if you have any questions go ahead and leave a comment down below I'll do my best to answer them and while you're down there hit that like button subscribe to the channel and hit that bell for notifications so you don't miss out on any other future reviews tutorials and a couple of vlogs coming up too so uh, with that said we'll catch you on the next one guys later
real crazy thing about this lake, just a quick side note, every time you come down here, it just feels like you're at the ocean. This Lake Superior is just gigantic. All you see is water. It's got a lot of waves, so it just feels like an ocean. <laughs> 